This is Apostle Dillon Bergen. Um, I want to talk a little bit about um, the rapture and the tribulation and so forth. Um, I've been studying this and I've been uh, teaching on it and I'm having conversations about it. Um, first of all, it's a very confusing, um, it can be a very confusing subject matter to delve into. And what I've recently found is that um, I was able to move away from the conventional arguments, the way the conventional arguments are presented concerning the rapture and the tribulation. There is what is called a mid -trib, the, the pre-trib, mid-trib and post-trib um, positions. So you either believe that, uh, by the way, the rapture means that um, Christ is coming back to the world where he's not coming to to into the on um on the earth and to live in the earth or establish any king his kingdom in the earth or so he's coming in the air according to first um thessalonians uh, around chapter four that christ will come in the and will be in the air and he will take up with him the the people who have died who are saved the dead in christ and after they are raised then he will take up those who are alive, um, the believers who are alive. So, um, so that is what is called the rapture. It's a taking away. You don't find the word in the Bible, but it's a taking away of the believers, dead and alive believers, to be with the Lord. And the Bible says, so shall they ever be with the Lord, and so forth. Now, um, there is also going to be a tribulation period, a period in which there will be a lot of persecution and... and um, a period in which there'll be what is called the unholy trinity will be ruling during that time. The um, antichrist, uh, the false prophet, and the one world leader. So there'll be a leader who would bring the whole world together um, uh, in, in peace. That's the, that's the one world leader and the antichrist. Um, same person. Then there'll be um, the false prophet who would be um, a religious leader. The person who is in charge of the, the global church. And um, there will be Satan himself which will eventually put in his appearance as um, you know, the archangel of, of evil. Um, or the, the arch enemy of God. Better said. The arch enemy of God. And so it would be Satan, the, the um, antichrist or one world leader. And the um, false prophet which would be a, a preacher. Now, some argument goes like this that before the tribulation begins which is a seven year period that the church will be taken away or the or the believers rather will be true believers will be taken away so that they wouldn't be around to face that seven year um, period of trouble and difficulties and challenges um, challenges against the Christians at least um, some are saying believers would be around for the first three and a half years and then things would get really bad at that point when the antichrist having um, established three and a half years of peace things going well the economies of the world are fine there's no war there's peace with israel and other nations and so forth and then that three and a half years of peace will lead to the antichrist demanding worship so he's establishing himself now as God. And at that point, many Christians are going to say no. And there's going to be heavy persecution of Christians and so forth at that point. That end of that three and a half year period into the beginning of the second three and a half year period. And great persecution is going to take place. So at that point, Jesus is going to come back and take the believers away. So they would experience the first three and a half years of the tribulation. But they, they would be taken out before things get really, really bad and the persecution gets heavy um, for the second three and a half years. Others are saying, no, God will let Christians go through the whole seven-year period. And um, at the end of the, the seven-year period, the true believers would have established themselves. True believers would have proven themselves. True believers would have been purged and, and sanctified through the, 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 the tribulation that they would have gone through, having endured to the end. And then now they would have proven that they are ready and fit to be taken um, away with the Lord. So those are the three positions. Now where do the seven come from? Um, in the book of Daniel, there is mention about seven, um, about time, 
time, time and a half a time. And that's normally understood to be three and a half years. Time, time, time and a half a time. And then there'll be another period of time, time, time and a half a time. Also, um, there is the idea of a, the 70th week of Daniel. There is the idea of the week of the, 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 the um, week of tribulation, that week of difficulty um, of seven day period um, of, of Daniel. And there's a lot of uncertainties and confusion about how this is interpreted. My personal interpretation, um, and I have to be careful how I say that because it is, it is, it is, it is my interpretation. But I don't mean that in an arrogant, um, um, uh, uh, unorthodox way. I am saying it from the standpoint of revelation, knowledge plus revelation, my studies and my readings plus the revelation that God has given me. Here is here is how my interpretation goes. One. Seven is a significant number. It's a number of, you know, completion and perfection and that sort of a thing. So the idea of seven is saying that there is coming a period when everything would come to a head. The completion of, the, of, of, of all that we could experience in the world as we know the world to have been for the last 6,000 years is going to get to a point where um, God is going to say, all right, you've completed, you've, you've basically... My patience is, is, is out with you now. I'm going to step in. Um, you have fully bucket to the brim with all of the, 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 the ways and the sinfulness of humanity. Now I'm stepping in to empty the bucket and start all over. That concept for me is what the significance of the seven. Now, I, I came across the rich concept of the ages, what is called biblical ages. And biblical ages, a biblical age is a period of 2,000 years. So from Abraham to, uh, from Adam to Abraham is the first, church, the first biblical age, a period of 2,000 years. From Abraham to uh, the Messiah, Yeshua Jesus, um, is a period of 2,000 years. And then from the Messiah to, to the period we are in now, is the third period of 2,000 years. What the Lord has been what, um, revealing to me is that the concept of seven may not necessarily mean, in our time, may not mean exactly seven years, calendar years. The, seven, the week of Daniel may not even necessarily mean seven calendar years. Because the con in the Bible, the concept, the general interpretation is that a week is equal to, a day is equal to a year. So seven days equal to seven years. You know, and so that whole concept of seven. Um, the generally, in interpretation of biblical um, literature and biblical principles and concepts, the seven um, days or, or the week of Daniel, um, the week mentioned in Daniel, that week of trouble and tribulation, generally interpreted and accepted as a seven-year period. I am just, I, I'm getting rid of that paradigm and that box altogether. And I am presenting a totally different reality. I may be totally wrong, but I also may be the, 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 one of the few persons or the only person who's really right about this. What I'm saying is, if the, since the church age has already gone through um, those uh, 6,000 years and so we are at the end of the 6,000 years and we are actually at the beginning of the 7th the seventh year the seven, or the um, the 6,000 years represents 6 days and we are at the beginning of the 70th year which is another 1,000 years I am saying that it is possible that we may be um, in for another 1,000 years or we may be in for a much shorter period than a thousand years and the, 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 the principle I am using is that God says a, a year is like a thousand years to him sorry a day is like a thousand years to him and a thousand years is like a day so I am saying God can decide that um, he gave us six thousand years which is like six days to him and he can give us another one thousand years which is like one day to him or he could give us seven years, huh? which, which would be um, 
seven years is the idea is that the seven is a perfection period so with god god can say listen i give you one one day and that day is a thousand years or i give you a thousand years but to you it's a long long time but to me it's only one day so either way it is a short time in on god's calendar to us, it is an extremely long time. A thousand years is an extremely long time. So to us, no, nah, it can't be another thousand years. Huh? But we've been here 2,000 already. Now, Jesus said, and I'm, and I'm still making my argument here for, saying, for taking this position. Jesus said in, the, in Matthew 24 that um, all the things that he described will come to, to fullness at the end of the age, of this age. Remember, Jesus was here 2,000 um, uh, 2, years ago, a little over 2,000 years ago. And he said all the things he was describing to his disciples would come to an ahead or would come to fulfillment at the end of the age, this age. So by reason of a biblical age, we are from the Messiah to now we are at the end of the age. So that means we are at the end of the world right now. Um, or put it another way. Let me let me put it a more a better, more accurate way. We are at the beginning of the end. We have come to the end of the of the age from the Messiah to now, and so we are we are now at the end of the age, and therefore at the beginning of the end of the world as we know it. How long would that take? I am arguing that that's anyone's guess. However, I am also arguing at the same time, the opposite side of that, what I just said, I am also arguing that the end is very near. And near here means um, that Christ could come in any time now. And so if that happens, we can say one of two things. Based on all the things we have seen over the last 100 years, the tribulation period has started um, or the, the time of sorrows has started. So Christ is coming to take us out of the world because this is the beginning of the rap, of the um, of the trip of the real tribulation period. So the time of sorrows have started. I believe that I'm arguing that the time of sorrows started a while back. We, are, we so we may be at the beginning of the tribulation. If pre tribulation is are correct, then Christ could come back any moment now and take us take the believers out of the world. So some of us are expecting that to happen any time now. If the pre-tribulationists are correct, that is what would happen. If the mid-tribulationists are correct, then we have already begun the tribulation period. And sometime very soon, with all the changes that are taking place in the world and movements towards World War III, movement towards the, um, China taking over the world, um, a lot of the changes that are happening in the laws of the United States and so forth, um, the, we are watching the beginning of the second half of the tribulation period in that things are ramping up. And therefore, um, we, are, we are heading right into a time of serious persecution. And if you look at the news, if you pay attention to a lot of um, what some people may simply want to call conspiracy theories, which a lot of them, when you really analyze them, are not just theories. They are real, con um, ag uh, accurate, these um reasonable arguments about what is happening in the world today so we may have started the tribulation and don't even realize it and the tribulation may not be um a three and a half year period as we count it in our calendar it could, it could be 300 years you understand um I'm, I'm just saying that this concept of seven has been traditionally interpreted as just seven literal um, calendar years and I'm saying into it may not necessarily be that way in God's calendar we may have gotten it wrong um, for a long time most of us may have gotten it wrong saying it is a literal three and a half years because I am saying the number of inventions that the world has seen has taken place over the last 80 to 100 years look I'm talking um, on the phone on, on I mean when did phone, when was cell phone invented and this is and cell phone is, is is old now 
but you have television you have flying you have um mean uh, uh print media and so on these things were invented over the last 100 years uh, i mean print media meaning the um the, the the mass print media not just print but mass production and so on over the last 100 years so the last 100 years time has actually sped up and then we have um, people like um, some of you may have heard the word, the name Baba Vanga, who's a, um, a clairvoyant and prophet from um, from Central America, who has accurately predicted a lot of global events. And Baba Vanga talks about the time that is coming when um, people may even would get new organs, and it would be easy for organs to be transplanted because um, healing would be much easier, and repairing of the body parts would be like re repairing parts of a car it would be that easy people would be living longer um there are others who are talking and baba venga herself and others are talking about harnessing energy from mars and venus and people living on mars at some point in the future that humans from earth will actually be able to set things up and live on mars now that is not going to happen in the next two or three or four years so the question is, when exactly is the three and a half years? Or should we interpret the three and a half years as a literal three and a half years? I am saying no. I am saying that we, we already have started the time of sorrows. We are heading into a period of, of intense tribulation. And God is, um, if, if, if pre-trip people are correct, God may call, Jesus may come back anytime now as I'm speaking to you. If mid-trip people are correct, then in a few years' time, um, and some prophets are even saying within a nine-year period from now, we are in 2001, within a nine-year period, some real serious things are going to happen, developments and as, and as well as persecutions. If they are correct at all, then that means that um, in the, over the next decade, so some of us are going to be here over the next decade before um, things get serious to the point where we could say boy we're probably in a mid-tribulation so god got to take us out if if not it may be that we have another so many more years and um before god uh before christ comes back if we are to go through the tribulation period and uh, if the post-trip people are right then we would have to go through the next nine years plus whatever other years after that and then the tribulation um period would would be fully in, uh, would be in full swing and at that point Christ would come to take us out of the world and then um, the world would continue for a while again why do I make the argument that the world could continue for a while again that in the human calendar one day is 24 hours but in God's mind one day is not 24 hours because God is timeless God is not time constrained God is eternal, so God is not, God doesn't count time by days. God may interpret things to us by days and 24 hours and minutes as we know it. But in God's mind, God's great mind, a day is not necessarily 24 hours. Therefore, it is possible that we could live to the end, to the end of the tribulation and still it is still in the, in the, the one day for God would still be for us years in other words let's say the post tribulation is post tribulation is all right that means the believers have to go through the tribulation period and then god will take us out of the world some people are saying but hold on if god take us out of the world then that means according to the scriptures we'll be taken up to the marriage feast um in heaven and we'll be coming down back right away and some and, and I would argue that if post tribulationists are correct, God could take us out of the world one day, but that's one day to us. And then God could keep us in heaven for the rest of the day. Uh, uh, in God's in God's calculation and agenda and timetable, which is timeless, God could keep us for one day for the rest of that day that He took us out of the world. But the rest of that day. To us is equal to yes. So if God take us out of the world now, God took us out today. But in God's mind, we were taken out today, but, but that's only a part of a day for, for God. In God's great, great calendar, one day for us is a minute for God. So when we say God took us out today, and God still have what? 24 times um, 60, times 60. 60 minutes equal one hour. 
24 hours times 60 minutes. So if one day for us is a minute to God or a second to God, imagine how long um, a day is to, to, to us. Look at, calculate it and you'll see how long a day is to, how long um, one day is in, in God's eyes, how many years one day is. I know all of this, a lot of it sounds confusing, but I hope you make sense of what I'm saying. And maybe I have to do a second video. But I'm just saying that um, when you free yourself from just thinking of um, three calendar years and, you, and, then, and then another three, I mean three and a half calendar years and then another three and a half calendar years, that for us is seven years in our calendar. But I'm saying in God's calendar, that seven year period may actually be more than um, our our lunar calendar or our Gregorian calendar seven year period. And if, if I am right, the, the, the times of sorrow have already begun. We, we're not yet into the tribulation period fully, um, but we, we are somewhere at the beginning of the tribulation period. God can come at any time. Jesus can come at any time now, but Jesus can also allow us to go through half of this tribulation period. For next decade or whatever the time is. Or Jesus can allow us to go through the whole period. And then put in his appearance after. I'll end with this. That um, one of the arguments. One of the I came across in all of my thinking and research on this whole matter. One person made a very interesting argument. That the mercy of God may not allow believers to go through three and a half years of famine. Um, and, and pestilence and war and all kind of different things for years. It may, literal, it may be a literal week by human calendar, maybe a literal week or a literal three and a half days or maybe or, or it may be um, a much, much shorter period. It will be at any rate a much shorter period than years because it may be God, God can cause so many things to happen in the space of one week, one literal week like our week. Or in three days as we know it. Or in, in um or in, 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 in thirty days or in three and a half months, whatever the case might be. The point is that as long as we are seeing everything from the human standpoint and the human calendar, it will always be uh, pretty confusing until we see the definite all the definite signs that and 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 um and until we get full revelation from God that this is a sign, this is a sign, that is a sign, um, and it is this year, or it is the next two years, or the next three years. Now, where does that leave us? Trust in the Lord, believe in God, give your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ, be ready. And keep the, keep the struggle going to understand where we are now on the global calendar, and therefore, um, and, and, and not where we, just where we are on the global calendar, on the, the our, our regular Gregorian, um, Jewish, uh, lunar calendar. But what are the signs of the time? And that for me is really the key issue. Jesus said to his disciples, he said, people know the signs of the time. You know when they, they, sp they swallow know the signs? He said, no, he said, people don't even know the signs of the time. He said, you know when the fruits are, um, trees are getting ready to bear, the swallow and the, the dove, they know the seasons of the year. He said, but you don't even know the signs of the time. So we are so so our real problem it would seem to me is knowing the signs of the time because the signs of the time would tell you for a shorty where we are in terms of that seven year period. And I'm saying seven year I, I, I'm going back and forth. I'm saying seven year meaning seven year period to us, but I'm also saying seven year period from God's vantage point, which could be a seven which could be seven thousand. And six thousand gone already. Here we are now in the seventh, um, in this, in the last thousand. And it may, um, it may not be a thousand. It may be seven years. It may be seventy years. It may be whatever it is. But I am saying that it is not as clear as some people want to make it seem. But there are some principles, and there are some definites. And part of the definite is that we must give our lives to the Lord in order to be ready. And one of the principles is that seven is a, is a concept of fullness and perfection and completion. And so to pin God down to 70 weeks or seven days, literal days, or seven years um, is, 
is working in the box and limiting how God may operate, which may surprise us um, to a great extent. Hope this is a blessing to you. I'm Apostle Dylan Bergen.